This week is National Suicide Prevention Week here at the Educational Fund to Stop Gun Violence and the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. We are recommitting ourselves to stopping gun suicides and destigmatizing mental illness. Gun suicides make up six out of ten American gun deaths, and they are responsible for nearly half of American suicides. We can stop this, and we will use this week and the rest of the year to raise awareness and stop this epidemic. When I was 16, I attempted suicide, and the reason I'm still here today is because I did not have access to a gun. Firearm suicide is a public health crisis in this country, and no one seems to be talking about it. A lot of people think that when you're suicidal and you want to attempt to take your own life that you'll find a way no matter what. But that's not really the case. Nine out of ten people who attempt suicide are like me and do not later go on to die by suicide. I was able to get the help that I needed and here I am ten years later. I have not attempted suicide again. I work here at the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence and I get to advocate for evidence-based policies that will save lives. I felt a lot of shame and stigma around suicide for most of my life and it really wasn't until earlier this year that I even felt comfortable talking about suicide and identifying myself as a survivor. Someone who lives with bipolar disorder and someone who advocates for mental illness, I want the general public to know that mental illness is not a significant risk factor for interpersonal violence, and people with mental illness are more likely to be victims of violence than perpetrators. The greatest risk surrounding people with mental illness and guns is firearm suicide, and we have the ability to change that. Suicide is actually a really impulsive act. In one study, 75% of suicide attempt survivors said that the time between making their decision to actively take their own life was less than one hour. And one in four suicide attempt survivors said that it was as little as five minutes before them actively deciding to attempt suicide. The Educational Fund to Stop Gun Violence and the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence are committed to drafting, passing, and enacting extreme risk laws in all 50 states. The Coalition to Stop Gun Violence and the Educational Fund to Stop Gun Violence are committing to reducing gun violence in all its forms, including suicide. Create policies that put time and space between at-risk individuals and firearms. An extreme risk law avoids stigmatizing mental illness because it is not based on a mental illness diagnosis, rather it is based on behavior. Extreme risk laws allow family members and law enforcement to petition a court to temporarily remove guns from at-risk individuals and prevent them from purchasing additional guns. The idea behind extreme risk laws is that those closest to an individual often recognize the warning signs preceding a crisis. Using extreme risk laws, concerned relatives can get help for a family member who is descending into crisis. We have been instrumental in drafting, passing, and enacting these laws in numerous states, and we're not slowing down. As we reflect on the 20,000 lives lost every year to gun suicide, we want to thank you for your efforts, and uh, please join us in making a difference this week and throughout the year in reducing these deaths and raising awareness about this very important issue.